Daryl Hamel Baum is known for two things. He was a close friend of Mike Tyson and allegedly shot 50 Cent nine times. His life has been a combination of mystery, intrigue, and tragedy. Baum was born in Brooklyn in the 1960s. He was childhood friends with Mike Tyson, who was also growing up in this area around the same time. From an early age, Baum had aspirations of becoming a businessman, but that would be something that was simply out of reach for someone from his background. As he got older, he was led down the unfortunate yet somewhat inevitable path toward a life of crime. In his neighborhood, he became known for his ability to knock people out with one punch and then rob them. Although it's unclear exactly when, he also earned himself the rather sinister nickname, Hamo, which is short for homicide. He's also believed to have become a hitman. During the 1990s, Baum was in jail for reasons that aren't immediately clear. Mike Tyson was in jail too, but was released in 1995 and returned to boxing with great success. Meanwhile, 50 Cent was beginning his rap career. 1997 was the year when Mike Tyson infamously bit the ear of Evander Holyfield. That same year, 50 Cent was discovered by Jam Master Jay from Run DMC, who took him under his wing and helped launch his life as a new rapper. Two years later, 1999, 50 Cent released the track How to Rob, which took shots at numerous rappers. This song caught the ear of his fellow Queens rapper Nas, who invited him onto his Nostradamus tour. On December 31st, 1999, Baum was finally released from prison. He went into the 21st century a free man. As a concerned friend, Mike Tyson tried to make sure that Baum didn't go back to his old ways. As a friendly gesture, Tyson bought him a car, some cash, and a Rolex. But probably most importantly, he gave him a job as his bodyguard. However, this did not seem to have been enough. Apparently, Baum didn't like the idea of having everything handed to him by one of his friends and wanted to stand on his own two feet. Fair. And Mike Tyson is someone who, for the most part, doesn't really need a bodyguard or has professional ones. So sadly, Baum got drawn back into the gangster lifestyle. During this time, Baum was a part of the Peanuts gang, which consisted of Baum, James Hamilton, and Ivory Peanut Davis. Davis also briefly featured in the music video for Junior Mafia's Get Money, where he sits on a chair while Lil' Kim is rapping at him. At this time, hip-hop culture and gang culture were deeply interwoven, especially the business aspect. Baum was also associated with a drug dealer named Kenneth Supreme McGriff, who was also affiliated and in business with Murder, Inc., a new record label which had Ja Rule as its flagship artist. In the year 2000, McGriff was particularly angry at 50 Cent, 50 released a song called Ghetto Quran, which he talked about his life growing up in Queens and how his neighborhood was ran by Preem, in reference to Kenneth McGriff, and Prince, which referenced McGriff's nephew, Gerald Prince Miller. For McGriff and many others, this was considered snitching, and for this reason, it's alleged that a hit was called on 50 Cent. However, in another video, we go into further detail on exactly why this track wasn't the main reason for why 50 Cent had the hit put out on him. You can check that video in the description or the pinned comment. On May 25, 2000, 50 Cent and his friend Curtis Brown were at 50's grandmother's house in South Jamaica, Queens. 50 and Curtis left the house, but before they could drive away, Curtis remembered that he had left his diamond-encrusted pendant back at the house. So 50 went back to his grandmother's house to get it. 50 then got back in the car, but unbeknownst to both 50 and Brown, a gunman was sneaking up on him. The person then crept up to 50 Cent's side of the vehicle with a 9mm. Nine shots were leveled at 50 in his hands, hips legs, arms, chest, and also left cheek. Brown, meanwhile, was only shot once in the hand. The gunman fled the scene, so Brown drove himself and 50 to the hospital. The shooter behind the situation is alleged to have been Daryl Baum. 50 Cent spent the month of June transitioning from critical to non-critical care. Mike Tyson, meanwhile, was busy training for his fight with Lou Savarese at the end of the month. Tyson was training out in Phoenix at the time, and it's believed that Baum flew over to visit him in his city. This fight was taking place in Glasgow, Scotland. In the build-up to the match, Tyson was expected to fly to London and do a conference with the UK press. Baum, who was not going to fly with Tyson to England, so instead he flew back to New York. The very next day, on June 9th, Baum was at the corner of Quincy Street and Marcy Avenue in the Bed-Stuy neighborhood of Brooklyn. A hitman walked up to him and fired a single shot to his head. When Tyson heard the news of his friend's death, he flew straight back to New York and postponed his trip to the UK. This postponement led to rumors that the fight was going to be called off, but on June 24th, the fight took place. And after so much buildup, after so much drama, Tyson delivered a killer blow and won the fight in the space of 38 seconds. After the match, an emotional Tyson said, I dedicate this fight to my brother Daryl Baum who died. I'll be there to see you. I love you with all my heart. All praise be to my children. 
This was a monumental win for Tyson. A win on a more basic level was also happening for 50 Cent. He was on a walker for a few weeks after the shooting, but was gradually getting better. The big question surrounding the situation was, who killed Daryl Baum and why? Some of this would be answered with events that soon followed. On August 1st, James Hamilton from the Peanut Gang was dining at a seafood restaurant he owned in Brooklyn and was shot dead by a gunman. Later that month, Ivory Peanut Davis was also fatally shot while driving his Range Rover. And what was a crazy and tragic coincidence, the shooting forced Davis to drive out of control and kill Joanne Kamitz, the director of the music videos for Wannabe by the Spice Girls and Save Tonight by Eagle Eye Cherry. Given the succession of events, it became clear that Baum's killing should not be looked at in isolation, and this was an all-out gang war. 50 Cent at this point was on the path to a full recovery. The only noticeable difference is that his voice got much deeper. But sadly, this wasn't the end of the shootings. In 2002, Jam Master Jay was also tragically shot dead. Jay was an almost universally loved DJ and artist, so his shooting was met with shock and confusion. Among the many speculations as to why he was shot was that McGriff had blacklisted 50 Cent and forbidden any hip-hop artist from working with him. Sadly, Jam Master Jay would not get to see how huge his protege 50 Cent would become. In 2003, 50 Cent released his debut album, Get Rich or Die Trine, an album that was inescapable to any music listener that year. Track 4 on this album was a song called Many Men, which talked about when he was shot nine times. And like the song that got him shot, Ghetto Quran, he once again didn't shy away from naming names. He rapped the lyrics, and the Bible it says what goes around comes around. Hamo shot me three weeks later, he got shot down. Now it's clear that I'm here for a real reason, because he got hit like I got hit, but he ain't effing breathing. 50 Cent only referred to him as Hamo and never gave his full name. Get Rich or Die Trying also contained the track Back Down, where 50 added to his ongoing beef with Ja Rule. In May of that year, Ja Rule's record label, Murder Inc., had its offices raided by the feds, and it was alleged that McGriff was using this record label to launder money he received from the drug trade. As part of the investigation, the affidavit read, McGriff was involved with the shooting of another rap artist, 50 Cent, who wrote a song exposing McGriff's criminal activities. This is why the lyrics of Ghetto Quran were believed to be the main reason why 50 got shot. Others speculated that the beef with Ja Rule that was the motivating factor, or it could have been a combination of many different things. Whatever the case, gun violence was incredibly rampant. 2003 was also the year Hamo's brother Tyrone T-Rock Bomb was murdered too. It wasn't until 2005 that Daryl Bomb was publicly named as 50 Cent's attempted killer. Journalist Ethan Brown released a book, Queens Reign Supreme, Fat Cat, 50 Cent, and the Rise of the Hip Hop Hustler, about the connection between gangs and hip hop in the Queens area. Having done in-depth research on this topic, he agreed that Daryl Baum was the person who shot 50 Cent. However, at the time, 50 had played up the idea that Baum's murder was in retaliation to his shooting. Brown, meanwhile, concludes that Baum's murder was unrelated and part of a gang war between the Peanut Gang and another Brooklyn gang called Cash Money Brothers, or CMB. When Daryl Baum got out of prison, he tried to extort a CMB member named Taz for drug money. At the same time, Baum's fellow gang member Ivory Peanut Davis was also thought to have murdered Myron Hardy, the brother of CMB's leader, Damian Hardy. This is believed to be the main reason why Daryl Baum was murdered. The CMB also thought that his brother was going to seek revenge, and this is why Tyrone Baum was killed as well. It was a continuous cycle of horrific violence. And to give you another example of how entwined these gangs were with hip-hop, Damian Hardy was at one time engaged to Lil' Kim. By 2007, 50 Cent was an incredibly wealthy man and decided to buy a 21-bedroom mansion in Connecticut. Its former owner was none other than Mike Tyson, and many have speculated that Daryl Baum may have even stayed at this home before. Why 50 decided to buy this property is yet another strange happening in this bizarre tale. A year later, Daryl Baum's name was still hitting the headlines. It was alleged that Mike Tyson had put $50,000 bounties on the heads of CMB leaders Damian Hardy and Edward Taz Cook. However, this testimony was never proven and denied by Mike Tyson. While the story is likely something from a Hollywood movie, real lives have been torn apart from these feuds. In 2015, Damian Hardy was given a life prison sentence for ordering six murders, two of which were Daryl and Tyrone Baum. Members of the Baum family gave their emotional statements during this trial, and the grief of losing not one but two family members in such a horrific fashion hasn't left them since. People will forever remember this story for the resilience shown by 50 Cent in surviving the shooting, but the darker side of the story is the incredibly rampant gang violence that haunted these neighborhoods. Make sure to subscribe for more stories.